<laughs> which is the, which is the mother or caregiver who um, removes all the obstacles from the child or the patient or whoever it is they're caregiving. So they never have to go through any difficulty. They think they're paving the way to make life easy, but in, in turn, what happens is that person never learns how to cope, never learns how to be in, independent, never learns how to individuate, take self-responsibility. Um, and then, of course, there's the vicarious living where the mothering archetype takes over the life of the nurture, nurturee doing things that they want to do um, in the name of caregiving. And it's a, that, that one's a little bit insidious. Um, it's okay when it's done in the light and with some transparency, but very often it's done insidiously um, as, as what they think is the only way to, to get what they, they really want and need themselves. Now, the opposite to the devouring shadow side of mothering is the attentive mother archetype or caregiver, where they allow space for their nurturing to be different, to try and fail, to be, be them, themselves. Um, and along with that comes the notion of picking your battles. So instead of like writing every single thing your nurturing does or doesn't do, um, you you pick your battles. You find what it is you're, you're going to invest time to make, take, give advice or make different suggestions or, or try to divert them to something else. So that's a more positive approach to being attentive. Um, and there's one other big shadow side that shows caregivers, and then we'll move on, is the abandoning mother archetype. The mother that, um, you know, doesn't either care or doesn't care for those they are nurturing. And this can slow, show up in, 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 you know, in the extreme end is total neglect um, and, or sabotage. Um, I know we had caregivers for my mother when, when before she got into assisted living, when we had someone coming in once a day, the caregiver was putting uh, two doses of medicine in her pill box uh, that if she had actually taken them before my brother discovered that, since he lived near her and would check it every day, uh, would have killed my mother. So we don't know if it was incompetence or sabotage, you know, <laughs> literally trying to knock my mother off. So there's that kind of caregiver. Um, they, they, they tend to um, leave the, the nurturee to deal with themselves or, in the case of kids, grow up without limits, without guidance, without even a moral compass. They're always trying to do their own thing. Um, and this, is, this abandonment shadow side shows up very prominently nowadays because we're always on our devices. In in fact, adults are said to be as bad, if not worse, than their teens or kids being on their TVs uh, or computer screens and YouTube channels and telephones and conversations like that um, or texting, you know, all the time, especially nowadays with all these incidences of working from home. So in general, the notion of abandonment is where there's lack of nourishment lack of nurturing, lack of attention, attention, and lack of attachment, which can lead to a variety of attachment disorders, which are really screw up some, um, somebody's um, the quality of life and future in terms of relationships. Now, the, the plus side of the abandoning is the autonomous mother caregiver, where they value their nurturee's interests um, and they also value their own life. So, so they know how to balance that time and space to be on their own, themselves plus the nurturee, but also having time for togetherness. And they uh, proactively experiment, try new things, be curious, you know, either sending the nurturee off to do that individually or doing those things together and also doing those things for themselves. So that's that's the mother and caregiver. It's probably the most complex, so we spent the most time on it. So we'll we'll get going here on the other two. Now the second one is the companion nurture or archetype. Um, you'll find a lot of people who are companion nurturers in job titles where they're the assistant, the assistant to the executive, maybe the personal assistant, or they're a time manager, maybe a coordinator and so on, because they're, they're the ones pulling the strings around other people, but from behind the scenes. So 
in the companion nurturer, you tend to have two, di two different kinds. One is where they complement or match each other. I don't know one is lacking a skill or a personality element or an approach to life that the other one um, has or doesn't. So like with a, um, a, a tribal companion, um, somebody who they go through life side by side and go through life uh, with their ups and downs. Um, and then there's the partnership where one supports the dreams and motivations of the other. So from the get-go, the whole setup is on an uneven ground. The one person tends to be uh, in the spotlight, getting the attention and the accolades. The other, the, the nurturer, tends to be behind the scenes and as a kind of supporting cast or sidekick or the right arm. Now, all of us have experienced that positioning um, at some time in life, but nurturing caregivers, uh, companion caregivers with this as a dominant archetype um, have, uh, carry this out in their life all the time. So the shadow side is they're comfortable following, but at the same time, they compare themselves with the person they're supporting. And they often feel um, like uh, their issues of loyalty or betrayal or distrust, um, partly because they're drawn to assist people who happen to be kind of harsh, abusive, or um, you know, closed off themselves, which is why they've hooked up almost in a codependent way with someone who will be their, their, their buddy. Um, so it does have very, very much to do comparison as part of being a companion. And um, they tend to notice or differentiate the differences between them rather than the similarities. Um, they forget that they have the positive values of being flexible, of being hardworking, of um, basically being kind-hearted and good-hearted and supporting someone else, which frankly, for a lot of the time, is actually a position of power. And over the time they are together, the uh, companion caregiver tends to soften the heart of the person that they're nurturing. Not always, but just notice if these dynamics are showing up in your life. And then finally, there's the servant archetype of caregiver. And this is um, the plus side of a servant caregiver is that they really honestly and truly have the priorities and needs of others in mind, but also balance it out with their own needs and priorities. For them, it's a spiritual practice. It's sacred service um, to care for themselves and others. The, the downside, though, is that it tends to be either or. They can care for others or themselves, not both at the same time. And there are some myths, of course, about people who take a serving role. I mean, the word servant itself, we tend to think historically, is someone who's under somebody else in terms of hierarchy. And they do the drudge work, the menial work, probably don't have skills, um, and aren't paid very well. They're undervalued, and if they volunteer, they're undervalued. If they're paid, even though it is actually uh, the work they do, which is very often... Um, life-saving and um, necessary to be done. So in terms of um, the the servant caregiver, it's more about what we'll say she does, not who she is, uh, work versus qualities of character. And so, you know, this whole notion of self-denial and you're not supposed to benefit yourself and you're not supposed to feel joyful yourself because you're, you're, you've got your head down, nose to the grindstone and so on. But when you remember and, and she remembers that it's a sacred service, then she can move forward and stay balanced and um, actually be, bring out the best notions of being a servant caregiver. So I know this is sort of different than the kind of things I usually talk about, but you never know with me. Um, but let me just remind you, as Carolyn May said, that our own soul's journey is connected with our higher purpose and calling. And in this case, it's nurturing on purpose or nurturing as purpose. So let's hope you, if you notice any of these characteristics in yourself, will leverage the positive side and balance it out to your advantage. And then take note if you've got any of those shadow side activities going on. And, um, you know, if it bothers you, whether it's you on the receiving end or the giving end, um, you can take steps recognizing where it's 
coming from. It's coming from a good place, but it may not be serving you. So, so thanks again for listening to the show this week. Hope you gained some new insights, tools, or strategies. Do look up sobradionetwork.com. You'll see a lot of our archive shows, fascinating talks with amazing people, living legacy leaders. And remember, the life you live is the legacy you leave. Bye-bye now. <laughs>